Welcome back to Spectacle Island for episode 32 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It suddenly dawned on me, having completed the sowing, seeding of field 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I said I'll get cows tomorrow. Why wait till tomorrow? I've still got day daylight. What I'm going to do is increase all of my animals, all of my livestock. I was just about to go in and start bedding all the animals down and making sure their feed areas were cleaned out and they were watered and fed. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do that anyway... Oh, I didn't confirm. Or did I? Oh yeah, got cows in there. That I might as well use the time and the fact I've got the extra money to increase the livestock now, feed them all before bedtime. Now overnight they can already be producing. It kind of just makes sense really. So we are we're now waiting on sunflowers to grow. Soybean in my large field that I just sowed and planted. Midnight the payout from the biogas plant. And that's it. I need helianthus headers for the sunflowers should be done by the morning. Should be ready to harvest. So we'll need helianthus headers I'm going to get a third harvester, I think. Again, we'll have the money to do it, so why not? I suppose I should have started with the sheep up there. I've got loads of milk to sell, whether it be sheep's milk or cow's milk. That will need to be done at some point. I've been doing eggs regularly. We've been doing... Or I, last episode, I sold wool for the first time, which we hadn't done until that point. So, yeah, milk will be on the agenda. Thank you for all the comments from the last episode. Thank you for the well wishes. Thank you for the kind words, comments, you know. Um, I will be going through and kind of tallying up as well with regard to subscriber contracts. I'm not going to make a decision yet. It's only been, like, well, 24 hours, I guess, since the episode went out. So I'll give it a little bit of time. I'm not ready to finish on here yet, or just yet. So yeah, let's decide. I was really hoping the streaming gods would smile on me and I could get a stream done this weekend, but unfortunately it's not to be. I may still have a try. I might have a try tomorrow. I'm just giving it some thought. My old gatto's playing up. I mean, like I said before, I can stream directly from PlayStation. I can just hit broadcast and start streaming. The problem is, it's very kind of. Well, I remember. Just think back to when I did my first stream, and it was it was literally that. Oh, I've got an idea. Let's hit broadcast and see what happens, kind of thing. And I know there's a lot of guys that have been streaming for a long time and talking to Mr. Dalit JD about it, anyone who streams regularly and does it without even really thinking about it, is that kind of, yeah, just, just do it, you know, nothing to it, just get on with it, you know, to just do this, 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 you know, so he helped me out and I've got a list of things I need to kind of work through because I don't do it often enough, but I want it to be professional, you know, I want it to come across as professional, I don't want it to be really shoddy. I might do another 14 actually. I've got salt mix ration, I've got straw pellets, I've got everything to feed them, I'm going to do another 14. Yes, I, I want it to, to be as good as it can be, you know. So, yeah, we'll see. I was also thinking, uh, after what I said the other day, about um, FS22 and doing more streams on FS22. I'm thinking of trying to kind of improve my streaming setup once I'm going to get into it. Uh, stream decks have been suggested. Stream deck can be quite helpful if I'm going to be doing it regularly. Um, if anyone's got any ideas on a stream deck, if there's one they particularly use that works really well. You know, as a, as a console gamer and player, I am I use a PC, of course I do. I have a, a nicely specced out PC. I'm not the most au fait with all things PC. That's I've just grown up as a console player, really, more than anything else. I've always used a PC as a far more kind of functional object, a 
of getting jobs done and work done and things like that rather than, than gaming per se. So I've got a lot to learn from, from that respect, you know. You can teach an old dog new tricks. He just forgets the other tricks. <laughs> one in, one out, that's the rule. Learn something new, something old disappears out of your head. I have reached capacity. <laughs> anyway, right, so more animals. Uh, I will then feed them. I might do a bit of a montage um, of, you know, me doing a bit of feeding and whatnot. But other than that, uh, you'll probably get a screenshot at midnight to see what we got for the biogas plant. And I will see you in the AM. Sleep well.
Well, that was a nice payout at midnight, wasn't it? <laughs> Two million, two hundred eighty-seven thousand thirty-six. That's gone down a little bit from midnight because I have leased three Helianthus headers. Three, you ask? But you only have two harvesters. That is true, but I'm going to buy a third one now. And the Helianthus headers, as far as they go. Now, you don't have to use a Helianthus header. But the Helianthus header, it looks like that. That's the Capello one. It will run at nine miles an hour rather than a standard header at six miles an hour. Which is like 50% more. And, you know, that's that's a significant increase in speed when you're harvesting. But that will only do sunflowers. So that's probably a reason why people don't tend to get them, even if they are a little bit faster, because they're a bit more expensive. So there's the 5.7 metre. And then we've got standard 12 metre. So I thought, well, I really want something kind of in between. The 12 will be too big. I don't think um, the harvester will have enough horsepower to get that to run. So I had a bit of a digging around. I had a bit of a digging around. I had a bit of a dig around. And there was this. Um, the Stark Industries SCT-635B, right in the very end. Whoa, that was weird. Sorry, right at the very end. Um, 6.5 metres. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. 6.5 metres. So it's somewhere between. I mean, not much bigger than the other one. 5.7 to 6.5, but it is bigger. So I've got three of those. But what I haven't got is my third harvester. The other thing I'm seriously considering now is with regard to my two large drape headers I got for those harvesters. When my soybean's ready to go on my massive fields, I'm going to have to scale down my, my header size. I think go for a collapsible one, probably. So we want this tank extension number. Yes, we want number three. Oversized sign, no lights configuration, all. 36 inch tracks, yes please. Do I go for the long pipe on the other ones or the short? I can't remember. That would be weird if I... Oh, oh no, I will leave it on long. I didn't go for a green star. 243 grand for a 29,100 litre. Let's buy. On the deck. Okay, that's weird. When you come out there, normally put you up here. Oh, so I was then going to the store. I did it from outside. I thought mm, something's gone horribly wrong. Right then, let's get this underway. Now again, this is a bit of a gamble. This harvester should have absolutely no problem with the horsepower requirement. I'm pretty sure this Stark Industries Helianthus header only requires 180 horsepower, so we should have plenty of horsepower. I don't know how it will be, whether it will drag on the ground. The other smaller headers I've used on these have been absolutely fine. So I think it has just been down to the horsepower requirement. Not the placement of the head or anything like that. I've taken the other two harvesters, they're already up at the field one. Ready to go. We've got fields one through six to harvest to get all the sunflower off. I haven't even checked the prices, that's a good point. As far as my livestock goes, you saw the kind of, I say montage, it was kind of a montage. Kind of. Our sheep, white milk producers, are up to 77. Pigs, I didn't buy any more. I didn't buy any new pigs because they are reproducing at a colossal rate at the moment. <laughs> Reproduction rate, 1 hour 45. So every 1 hour 45, we're getting a new one. So I think we were on about 70-something yesterday, so we've got up another 10 already. So uh, I, I didn't need to touch those. Um... Our wool sheep, 77, and our cows, we were up to, I think I rounded up to 70 in the end. I, I think I took a couple of loads and I was up to 66, and I thought I'll just round it up, and I've got another four. So that's had another birth overnight. So we're up in the 70s for all our animals. Production's looking good, 29,000 litres of milk, 21,000 litres of slurry. Good thing is with the slurry from there and from the pigs, I can take that to the, the biogas plant, 18,000 litres there, I might do that sell that get the digest date and the whole process rolls through now and that was kind of the point i was making either in the last episode or earlier in this one it might be the last episode when i was saying about reaching that point you know where other than getting a third harvester and i suppose i could get a fourth harvester i could get more ground and as far as animals go my animals livestock are ticking over 
I haven't set myself on this, like I have on some, I've set myself a target of, you know, I want to get 500 cows on Eureka, I want to do a thousand, you know. Some, I haven't run all the animals. So, yeah, like, like I was saying, I think I've really kind of ticked all the boxes I'm way to. I want to get this Helianthus harvest done, because, simply because I haven't used Helianthus headers in ages. And I thought, why haven't, you know, I'm kind of going through a checklist thinking, what haven't I used in a while? What process haven't I done? Let's get the lights on. What process haven't I done for a while? And, um, yeah, that was kind of one of them. And because I wanted to buy, well, and I wanted to do that massive field, that's going to be kind of where I finish. Oh, that was the other thing I meant to say. I'll show you up in the yard when we get up there. I have, um, I say overnight, yesterday evening, after I did the animals, I came down to field seven because the grass was all fully grown. I haven't really done anything with field seven for a little while. And I mowed, windrowed and baled grass bales. I did 48. 48. 24 I left over at the sheep, milk sheep. And 24 I took up to the main yard. Simply for the reason, again, that for feed wise, if I stick a couple of bales in the feed area, it will gradually tick away at those, which loose you can't do. Loose, if you leave it on the ground, it just kind of treats it as that's a kind of a byproduct of a you know, mess they've made. So by putting bales there, the same with straw for the cows and that kind of thing, if you want to. I, I'm keeping hold of my straw bales for the time being for total extraction, but if you leave them there, they'll just gradually work their way through those bales. It will gradually kind of eat away at them. So I thought, you know what, while I've got the grass there, I'll do some grass bales. I also came down first this morning when I sorted out the animals, got up early, fed them, watered them. My trimming was okay. I re-manured and re-watered my pear trees. So all this stuff is just kind of is ticking over now, you know. I did think about going down the route again, and I've done it before on different maps. I think the largest one I did was on Sussex Farms, I think it was where I did that market garden and I had loads of greenhouses. I thought about doing that, which I could potentially do. That would bring me in a load of money if I wanted to. So yeah, 24 here, 24 down there. I've put a couple, yeah, stacked up over there. So what should happen is if I go down to my sheet, those ones there. Um, yeah, their food will stay at maximum until those bales run out. It's, I mean, it's a given for anyone that's been playing the game for a long time. Now, it doesn't work on all of them I'm aware of. I don't know if it has to be coded in. I know Jim's ones have always worked that way. Maybe it does work on all of them. That's not something I've ever tested, to be honest with you. But then to test all of them would take ages. Now, this is a nice sight. Three of these. <laughs> so what I'm going to do... I'm going to take control of hubs number one, please. And then we'll... Turn the lights off. I will set the field up. Worker in hubs number two will carry on. Because these are 29,000 litres, they shouldn't fill up. Then with harvest number one, I'll come over and I'll do field two around the edges. Harvest number three will come onto there. I will then move on to the next one. Hopefully by the time I start the next one, the first field will be finished. I can move that harvest and then we just kind of bounce around in pairs between the fields. I think when we get to field six, being it's much bigger, we'll probably run all three harvesters on field six. I think. That's that's kind of where we're going with it. I think I did go for long pipes on those, didn't I? Yes, that was a good call that I did that. I'm pleased. So, the light's on. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. Has it unfolded? I don't know. I thought I had. Why is it not unfolding? Okay. This happened the other day. Let's try this again. I was pressing the wrong button. That would be why. Tonight. So, before the um, pipe police get involved, it's only because I came into the field that direction. Don't worry. What I am going to do is let's raise the header, swing around, and I'll get the pipe the right way. There we go.
it is surprising, you know, when you're kind of driving different, you know, when you're driving different tractors and you get one tractor does 26 miles an hour, one does 32, you know, and it doesn't really seem to make a lot of difference. When it comes to harvesting, that extra three miles an hour really does seem to make a huge difference. I mean, obviously it does make a huge difference if you're doing massive fields or loads of fields or, you know, if you've got a 2,000 acre farm or whatever it is you're harvesting every year, the extra three miles an hour on your harvester is going to make a massive difference over all of those um, hectares, acres, whatever it should happen to be running. I was also doing a bit of reading up on the old helianthus. Now, obviously, there's the, oh, was it heliotropic? Is that what it's called? Heliotropic? Something like that. Now, when the, the sunflower heads move in the sun to aid in photosynthesis, that kind of thing, which is fascinating. And they are pollinators, which, because of their design so to speak because they're bright and colorful whatever they attract pollinators which um the knock-on effect of that is if you grow sunflowers around any other crop types as well because they draw in pollinators those pollinators will help keep down insect populations um, especially bad insects um on other crop types so they they work incredibly well for that but something else i didn't know and it's like they're almost it's not so much an evolutionary thing because it happens fairly quickly is that to draw in pollinators they're bright and they're colorful which is great in drier climates they grow much bigger they grow much bigger because in drier climates there aren't as many pollinators so the sunflowers have to grow larger to attract pollinators that are around from greater distances they need to be seen what it is when you stop and think about that it's a plant but that's mad you know I mean obviously they don't get around they don't get into a committee you know the board of Helianthus every year and say right okay what we're going to do this year no obviously it's it's something that just happens but it's fascinating that they do that so we've can't leave that can't leave that so we have got quite a bit of this to do. I'm going to do one more strip round. Now these will turn on a dime because of the tracks. So as far as turning goes, we shouldn't have an issue. But what are we? What are we? Bing bang. What I'm going to do is just do a strip at either end, just to make sure I've got enough turning room. I'll get the other worker on this. Actually, what I'll do. Stop there a second. Turn the engine off. Let's get harvest number two. If I get harvest number two running, then I'll just do the other strips while it's going. Actually, just turn those lights on, but I'm pretty sure they'll turn off as soon as I hire a worker. Oh, not again. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that for a turning circle. Not going to need much room. Okay, we have work to do. I'll see you when I... Well, when we've got two fields under underway, we'll see how we go. I think because these run a little bit faster as well, it's going to be a lot quicker to do than I think in my head it's going to be.
I decided to bring the larger trailer down. I wasn't sure what the yield was going to be, but off six fields it was going to be more than 70,000 litres. That's a lovely thing to behold. So, field one, two, three, done. We're on field four. I have been chasing behind the harvesters with various different implements as well. Huh. Why does that make me? Why does that make me smile? Why does that make me so happy? That just looks brilliant. Love it. It's not the first time I've run multiple harvesters, but yeah. Welcome to hell, Ianthus. In, in, yeah, in a good way. If hell was a great place to go, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but yeah. So well, I have been following on behind, liming where needed. Field four needs lime. Field one needed lime. That's limed and fertilised. It's the same thing again. I should fertilise first, then lime, then fertilise. I did part of it the same way. That didn't need lime, so that's just been fertilised. When that gets planted, seeded, that will then get another fertilising state. Field four, I started liming again, then realised I should have fertilised first. So I'll be moving the fertiliser from there to there. And then I've split this into thirds. That one's doing that section. This one, because the way I turned it, will go across this way, and this one's going to come this way. So if I've got it just right, they should all finish roughly at the same time. They're on to field five, then the monster field six, which is a tad bit larger. And we'll see what we end up with. I need to go and grab the uh, fertilizer spreader. We'll crack on with that. Before I forget, I must have forget, I meant to do this earlier, and I kept forgetting. A massive thank you to Robert, uh, Lee and Jason. Thank you so much for your generosity. It is very, very much appreciated. Thank you. So, more of the same, I guess. Keep on keeping on. I might just spend a bit of time just watching the three harvesters running. I am wondering whether or not I need to check my repair tab because one of them seems to be running way faster than the others. Which is weird because three is the newest one, so why would that be the case? Because they're all pretty much in a line. You know what I'm going to do? Let's just double check in the garage. Scroll across. All three harvesters are okay. And the headers are leased. Hmm. That's intriguing. Why would that be the case? Oh, could be. What I'm talking about. It's the field, isn't it? Of course it is. Because this side here is sloped. So those two harvesters have got further to go before they turn. This one's got a shorter distance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Yes, less. So about that the better. Ooh.
we made it. Last sunflower, I need to move because <laughs> I've got my fertilizer worker cracking on last bits going into the trailer. Now the last two harvesters, I've just thrown stuff in there and I'm not too sure with this how much we're gonna end up with. It's def yeah, definitely over 200,000 liters. I don't think we're going to hit the limit of 250 that the trailer holds. I don't think we're going to. But it's been incredibly productive. These helianthus headers have worked absolutely perfectly. No problem at all. Turn the engine off on that. Let's check the map. So for one, two, three, four, five, they have been prepped. So these three had to be limed. So they were fertilized, limed, fertilized. These two didn't need lime, so they've only had one load of fertiliser. And we're in the process of doing our um, fertilising run on here, because that doesn't need lime either. Then once uh, fields two, three and six are replanted, reseeded, we'll get another load of fertiliser on there. That's all good. What am I going to put in them? I don't know. I, d I don't know that I am. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do now. Because once the big soybean harvest is done, I think we're going to be moving on. I think that's kind of my decisions kind of made, I think, in my head. I think I'm going to go with foldable headers for that. Let's go that way and we can cut through the fields then, can't we? Move that other way. Still loving these harvesters. I think they're absolutely brilliant. And we're going to need to move because that fertiliser spreader is getting here really quick. That's still unloading. It's got fairly slow unload speed. That's one thing I will say for these harvesters. But then I say, when I say that, it's a 29,000 litre tank. So... It's still going to take a while, regardless, if, even if it is the same as other harvesters, there's more to unload, so of course it's going to take longer. God, I'm full of these, full of these today, aren't I? Oh, stating a bleeding obvious, what's the matter with you? Right, let's get that off the field, and then... Good news is we've got two cell points that are taking that are paying over two thousand for a thousand litres. One is boat unloading station two, top right hand corner, but the boat won't take 180,000 litres at a time. The other one is the sunflower oil factory, which is actually in the same local, pretty much the same location. And the price between them is negligible. If we go across one and our sunflower, sunflower oil factory is 2,076 for a thousand litres. And boat unloading station is 2,113. So, for ease of being able to do it in one go, I'm going to take it to the Sunflower Oil Factory. How much have we got? 227,809 litres. That's not bad. And we're going to get over 2,000 for 1,000 litres. <laughs> been a day of big payouts please but I, I guess it's that thing isn't it the bigger machinery the more fields the bigger the fields of course it's going to be bigger payouts I say of course I mean each of these fields fields one to six I could have put a different crop in each one so you know but it's interesting to see how much we ended up with and those helianthus says what time is it now 9 31 we're playing in real time and it hasn't taken anywhere near as long as I thought it might have done Partially because the headers, and it will run at nine miles now, and partially because I was running three harvesters. I think what I also was doing, I was setting the workers off on the sections, and I was using the third harvester, or the first harvester, depending on how you look at it, to mop up all the bits in between. So all the odd angles and strange bits that the workers didn't want to do or couldn't do, I did, which sped the whole thing up as well. Well, what are we going to get? What are we going to get? It's going to be over 500... Oh, I'm saying 500,000? Yeah, it's got to be over 500, isn't it? Or has it? Four hundred fifty. Mm. My, my mental maths has gone out my head. temptation to buy another full load of manure and just take it and sell it at the biogas plant is huge <laughs> but but dodge me the manure entrepreneur 
I'm not going to be doing that again. Right, we want this one up here. Open the cover. Just going to double check them in the right place. Yes, we are. Let's go. Look at the speed that's going up. <laughs> well, hell's not such a bad place. When you're uh, making money like this. Why do I think 500,000? Oh, 473. That's not, that's not a bad payout, is it, for a harvest? We'll take that. Worth all the work and the effort of prep. And that is the end of another episode. So what we're waiting on now is the massive soybean harvest. And... What day is it? Say Sunday, I'm recording this. So it's depends whether or not we get an update for the harvesters on Monday if we do we might be in luck if we don't we'll switch headers that would be another nice big payout now the question is moving forward another big question lots of big questions not ultimate questions but they are big questions thank you to all the for all the responses um, I think the general feeling is uh, subscriber contracts I think that's where we're going with it I know a lot of people said they'd rather see me do seasons and precision farming. Well, I did precision farming on Rasfet, and it went down okay, but not as well as I thought it was going to. Seasons, I was, I'm was, i still seriously considering popping back, and before we get to FS22, finishing off or doing some more on, on Six Ashes, which I was running seasons on there anyway, so if you're a seasons fan, I'll be running seasons on there. I'm just going to continue where I was. I kept the save game. I wasn't, I wasn't stupid. I didn't delete it. So, yeah, subscriber contracts on whichever the other Let's Play is going to be. So, I, I, the option of giving viewers three to choose from and then, then picking one, I think I've decided on a map I want to do. But that's still not set in stone. But anyway, yes, as I was saying, we have come to the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.